In this video, we'll learn how to create a directive in Angular. The term directive has meant different things over the history of Angular. With the old version of Angular, which is Angular JS or Angular 1, directives were things that you created uh, that could add to the DOM that you have at your disposal, the DOM elements you have at your disposal when you're building markup. So you could create components, you could create attributes that you could add to your DOM language, to your HTML language. And directives were like the generic term used for both. But in the new version of Angular, Angular 2 Plus, there is a distinction between these custom HTML elements that you can create. There is one type of custom HTML elements that we've been looking at all along, which are components. They are things that you have within the open and close uh, Angular brackets, right? So those are components. The app paginator is a component. And then you have this other type of DOM element that you can create, which are actually attributes. They are not components on their own, but they are special HTML syntax that you can generate to put into other elements like this anchor tag. Let's say you have my your custom element, all right? So now custom element is this new thing that you can create in Angular, but they're not components in the sense that they don't have an element of their own, they are attributes that get appended into other elements. So these are what are called directives, right? So they are, these are called attribute directives. Now you can create these attribute directives and you can add them to any existing component or any existing HTML element, and you can affect the behavior of that element. I'm going to create a directive to demonstrate this. I'm going to kill my ng serve, and uh, I'm going to use the same example that's available on the Angular documentation because I think that's a great example, and we'll explore how to do that. Uh, the example is a highlight directive. The idea is you create a, a directive called highlight, and then what it does is highlights itself on mouse over. So let's say you want to do highlight like this, and then this element that this highlight directive applies to, which is the anchor tag here, is going to highlight when you move your mouse over that anchor tag, all right? Now, the use case for this, which we're gonna be looking at, is the blog post title component has the post title, right? So you have uh, the card title, which is the title of the post in each tile. I want this to be highlighted when I move my mouse over the title. And yes, you can use CSS syntax to have this card title, maybe have another highlight title CSS class, and then have that highlight on mouse over. But what I want to do is leverage the Angular directive concept. So let's say there are a bunch of different things that you want to have this behavior applied to in your application. There are certain things that when you move your mouse, you want it to have like a yellow background. You don't want to be repeating that CSS uh, styling in all those different places. So you can have an Angular directive and apply it to every place where you need that functionality. So I'm going to create this directive. Uh, again, we're going to use the Angular CLI support, ng generate, and then I'm going to do generate a directive this time, and I'm going to call it highlight. Then it has created these files and then also updated the app.module.ts Notice that a directive is no different from a component as far as declarations are concerned. It is still going to be declared in the declarations section, just like any other component. Now, if you go to the directive itself, I'm gonna close all these other files. Go to the directive. Here you see that the directive has a similar annotation. It's, an, it's a TypeScript class, but it has a different annotation called directive. It's very similar to component, just that it's called directive and it has a selector as well. This is a selector which you can use on any element to apply this directive to that element. So the selector here is called app highlight. Now what I can do is go to my blog post title component and then apply this to this title. The way I apply it is by using this attribute. So a directive is meant to be used as an attribute. So by applying this attribute, I have now applied this directive to my title element, which is the h5 element. 
And I can apply this to any other element. I can apply it to the paragraph, I can apply it to the anchor, anchor tag. Basically, a directive is meant for reuse in that sense. You can apply it to multiple different elements. Now, once you've applied it to the element, the functionality of the directive is going to apply. Now, what is the functionality of the directive here? What are we doing? There is really nothing at this moment. A directive is usually applied to an HTML element. Now, you would want a reference to that element so that you can affect it. In this case, a highlight directive needs to change the background color of the element that it's applied to. So you need the DOM element that this highlight directive is applied to so that you can get hold of that DOM element and change the background color. I'm gonna do this while we do an ng serve so that we can see the change in effect. Okay, so now that I have ng serve running and I have the element being displayed. Of course, this doesn't do anything right now because even though the directive is applied, it's basically a no-op at this time. Now, how do I get hold of the element, a reference to the element that this directive is applied to? I do that by doing dependency injection. I can ask Angular to give me a reference to the element. And the reference to the element is a special class called element ref. So I'm gonna do dependency injection just like I dependency inject any other service. I'm gonna call this element and the type is element ref. And now with this, now I have access to that element. I can do a console.log so that we can see what it looks like. You open the developer console and now here you see we have the element ref being printed four times, once for each title. Since we have put this directive inside an ng far, that directive gets applied to all the titles in that view. So we are seeing four element refs. And in the element ref, you notice there is the property called native element. The native element is what gives you access to the DOM. And now here you see you get all the child nodes, you get the class list, you pretty much have the DOM object right there. So this is what we need. And what we're gonna do is Instead of console logging it, I'm gonna do element dot native element. And now what I'm gonna do is change the background color. I'm not gonna do a mouse over yet. I'm just going to change the background color to yellow by default. I do that by accessing the style element and then background color. And I'm gonna make this yellow. And now you notice I have essentially applied this element style to every element that has that directive applied. Let's have some more fun with this. I'm gonna apply the directive to the paragraph now, the summary. All I need to do is apply this directive attribute, save, and now guess what? The paragraphs have the highlight too, see this? And the thing for you to remember is since you now have access to the native element, the DOM element, you can pretty much do anything you want here. You can have uh, event hooks added, you can change the style, you can change the content of the element. You know, you can, you can pretty much have complete control of that DOM element. So any of the DOM APIs that you wanna use, you can actually use them over here. All right, so I'm gonna put this back. Uh, I'm gonna remove the highlight from the summary because this looks really bad. And let's have this only on the post title. Now, I wanna make this change to have that kind of functionality where I don't have this highlighted to begin with, but when I move my mouse over this, that's when I want this to get highlighted. Now, what I need to do is tell Angular that there are certain events on this element that I'm interested in. And I ask Angular to run certain methods on the directive when those events happen. Kinda like lifecycle hooks, if you remember, there are certain lifecycle hooks that trigger Angular to call methods on your component. Similarly, you can specify what are the events on this element that you are interested in, and you can ask Angular to call methods on your directive when those events happen. In this case, we are interested in mouse over events, mouse enter and mouse leave. When mouse enter event happens, you want Angular to call a method on your directive. And when mouse leave event happens, you want Angular to call another method on your directive. So let's create those methods first. I'm gonna create the add 
highlight method which is going to be the method which adds this highlight color since I'm moving this out this has to be a this dot we have an element as a member of this class and then I'm gonna have a remove highlight Good, copy this line and I'm going to set the background color to null. Note that I'm not setting the background color to white. It might work in this context, but what if the background color of somebody who's using your directive is not white, right? Some, some component, some page is using, has some other background color already and they're using your directive. You want the background color to basically be null so that it just takes on whatever background color the consumer of your uh, directive already has going on. All right, now I have this. I've added two methods, but then you need to ask Angular to call these methods when certain events happen on your host. So you do that by adding a directive. Like with a lot of other things here, you use a directive called host listener. The host listener is a directive that you add to your methods to tell Angular that you want it to listen to the host element and then do call these methods based on different events. Host listener takes an argument, which is the event itself that you want Angular to listen to and then call the method when that happens. So in this case, on mouse enter, I want the add highlight method to be called. And on mouse leave event, I want the remove highlight method to be called. And I've removed the, the code in the constructor so that by default, this element does not get highlighted. I'm gonna press save. And now, click on the browser so that I have focus. And when I see, when the pointer enters the element, you get the highlight. And when it leaves the element, the highlight is removed. Do you see this? All right, now this directive is one of obviously several directives you can create in your application. It's important to remember opportunities where you can leverage directives. It's very common to fall into the trap of, okay, I want this component to do this thing. I'm gonna add this logic in the component itself. But it's always helpful to kind of take a minute to think about what that functionality it is that you're adding and if it's actually specific to the component or does it benefit from having like a generic directive, reusable directive that you can apply to multiple different components. Once you identify those kind of uh, horizontal concerns that you can create directives out of, your code essentially becomes a more reusable. You can apply this to multiple different components and have it work that way. All right, now the other thing that I wanna highlight is that these directives can also take in values. Now, you know that a component can take in input arguments with the add input an annotation. Similarly, a directive can also take in input arguments. And the way that works is when you, give an, when you give a directive a value, so let's say I want the color of the highlight to be passed in. Now let's say I pass in green, and I want the app highlight directive to highlight the right color depending on what's passed in and use yellow as the default. Now, once you pass in a value to the directive, you need to accept it in your directive class. And you do it pretty much the same way, just like you have uh, add input for components, you can have add input for your directive. And let's say I call it the color. And by default, I set it to yellow. Now here's the thing though, Angular does not know that this needs to be passed into the attribute name called color. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna force this. Angular is gonna say, I'm gonna pass this green parameter to a property named app highlight. So we know how to do that when the property name is different from the attribute name. This is basically just passing this as a string argument to the add input annotation. And now when this value isn't passed, when this value isn't passed, the default is yellow, but then when that value is passed, 
that value is sitting in the color member variable. And now what I can do is use the this dot color instead of hard coding it to yellow. Now when I move my mouse over, I get the highlight being the color that I have passed in. And then that makes the directive even more flexible. If you don't like this, you can also pass in additional attributes. Let's say I call this color equals green. Now what we're doing is using this directive as a means to apply functionality and then using another attribute to pass in the data. So if you pass in a second attribute, then you will have to handle it by using that to receive your values. In this case, it's just the same, so I can get rid of this. And now you have two things that are happening. One attribute, which is applying the directive, and another attribute, which is passing in a value to that directive that you already applied. And the functionality works pretty much the same way. So this was a quick introduction to directives. Again, I urge you to think about all these common functionalities that you can apply to multiple elements in your app and then try to create directives out of it. And these directives are pretty useful when you wanna change the appearance of your DOM element or you wanna have different events happen to the DOM element. You can have access to the DOM element and apply those different functionalities to it.